Are you new to training and you want to get it right? Welcome to this Train the Trainer session on the four pillars of training. In the next four minutes, you will learn how to design and deliver a great training course or workshop and be a successful trainer using the four pillars of training. Here they are. Specific measurable objectives. Engaging delivery that is enjoyable and relevant. Assessment, that is checking that learning has taken place. Support, that's having some way of making sure learners are supported to put their learning into practice back at work. If you are an in-company or external trainer, your role is to support your management by providing skills and motivational training to meet legislation requirements, equip staff with work-related competencies, and contribute to ongoing performance, motivation and morale in your workplace. When you've done your job well, the end result will be change behaviour. People enthusiastically putting their learning into practice. Here we go with pillar one. Objectives and outcomes are clear statements of what your trainees will be able to do at the end of the training. What will be the changed behaviour? We need to be clear of exactly what our trainees need to know and be able to do at the end of any training we design. As a general rule, objectives will be accompanied by some kind of competence checklist so that learning can be assessed at the end of the training. Now we have the objectives in place, what about the delivery of your training? This is pillar two, engaging training delivery. Make your training engaging. Involve your group members. Try and keep away from the tail end of the trainer continuum and move more to the engaging and empowering end. Tell is the old death by PowerPoint. I'm not saying there's not a place for slides or visuals, but too much tell switches people off. I often call tell spoon feeding. Facilitation is helping people think for themselves. Drawing information from your learners by asking questions, encouraging discussion and opinions, and letting them share their knowledge instead of you passing on yours. This works very well when there are people in your group with some knowledge of the subject and the skill being covered. And you can facilitate one-to-one -one when delivering on-the-job training. Now let's look at empowering. Empowering people takes you to another dimension in training. You may call this self-learning. This involves creating activities where learners do the work. Give the learners a project or research to undertake and report back to the rest of the group. The benefits of empowering are that your delegates are fully engaged and enjoy the sense of developing themselves. The training continuum helps you to consider what kind of activities you will include in your course delivery. And these activities must be designed to meet your course objectives. This takes us to pillar three, checking the learning. When the training is completed, a good trainer will always check the learning in some way or other. If you need a hard check, for example, to be sure that people can perform a task, then ideally you should observe them performing the task. And also check that they understand what they are doing and why by asking questions or providing a written test. When delivering train the trainer courses, I observe my trainees delivering a training session and I need to be happy that they are able to use these four pillars successfully before I will sign them off and issue a certificate. When a soft check is sufficient, for example, your learners don't need to be fully skilled, but do need to understand what to do and where to go for help. Then perhaps a softer check of learning may be appropriate, such as asking questions. Now we come to pillar four, meaningful support back at work. It is so easy for people to attend a training course, go back to work and never ever put what they've learned into practice. Supporting learners back at work may range from simply providing materials to arranging review meetings or putting trainees alongside an experienced employee for a while. We sometimes call this buddying. And there are numerous other actions that can help. What you do will depend upon the nature of the job. 
To summarise, good training should provide knowledge, skills and motivation built on the four pillars of objectives, engaging delivery, checking the learning and support back in the workplace. All of this delivered by an enthusiastic and inspirational trainer. You. Would you like some help? <laughs>